Hey, my dear Coffee with Brenna friends, grab your beverage, grab your Bible. It's time for Coffee with Brenna. It is late. It's not dark because it's early. It's dark because it's late. And so I'm not having coffee. I'm having my, I do this electrolyte drink mixed with uh, seltzer. The electrolyte drink I like is called Ultima. I won't link it in the show notes. You can find it on Amazon or... Thrive Market is the cheapest, but I get random questions on stuff like that, so I figure I might as well just throw it out there. I don't have any affiliate links for it or anything. You can just find it on the internet. This is lemon mixed with blackberry seltzer. It's very good. I'm recording this on Wednesday night because I just got back from a retreat, and I decided I would combine that experience with my topic today, which is why retreat? Why should we take a retreat? Now I hear you right now thinking there's no way I can make time for that. Please don't shut the video off. We're going to get creative here. So just, just bear with me. You guys trust me. You should trust me by now. Next month, it will be three years of coffee with Brenna. We've lived through a pandemic. I've had COVID twice and I kept, I didn't miss a week. I had one week where I lost my voice, but I think maybe that was the only one I missed. There might have been two, actually. Two weeks. Once I lost my voice, or maybe two weeks I lost my voice, but that was the only reason. I even recorded my videos outside when I was quarantining the first time. The second time I got COVID, I just shared it with my whole family, so there was no need to quarantine. But we've been doing this for three years, so you guys got to trust me, okay? Before you think about why you can't retreat, let's just chat for a minute. I just got back from this retreat. It was like 48 hours. It's a minister's retreat. There was very little teaching. There were some like community conversations, they called them, where you sat around and chatted about different topics. There was lots of time to rest and to reflect. And they had long worship, musical worship sessions where you could receive prayer and things like that. I felt like I could I could go for like two more days, except I did miss my family. But it was awesome, and it got me thinking about retreat. So don't check out. Let's look at scripture, and then I'll tell you about my experience. So why retreat? Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Jesus will give you rest. And then one more scripture that I thought of in Mark 6, it says, because so many people were coming and going that they, Jesus and the Jesus and the disciples, did not even have a chance to eat. Jesus said to them, come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. So they went away by themselves in a boat to a solitary place. And if you read the rest of the story, that's verse 32. If you pick it up in verse 33, they couldn't get away from the people, but they tried. Whereas I don't know about you guys, but there really aren't that many people chasing me around. (laughs) I'm going to list the reasons for why retreat. But after I do that, I'm going to talk about ways to make this happen even if you have various challenges in your life that make it difficult. So I'm going to give three reasons here, three simple reasons. One, the main one I've already mentioned, why retreat? Because we need rest. We need rest. We need opportunities to get away from our everyday lives, the busyness of it all, and rest. I could not do a retreat in my house. It's kind of like I was talking to someone about going on vacation. I know a lot of people do staycations and maybe one day I'll be able to do that, but I'd rather take a short vacation away from my home (laughs) and make that very affordable. Like we went to an Airbnb. I think we were there three nights. It was not expensive. This Airbnb, thankfully, did not charge like a huge cleaning fee like many of them do. I would rather do something like that. We didn't go very far away. There was there was actually very little to do. I probably could have planned better. But we waited a little too long to pick a place. In any event, I'd rather do something like that than take a few days off and stay here 
because it's hard for me to stop. I'm not a good housekeeper. So when I get time off, I feel like I should try and tidy up and do things. It's hard for me to just sit around and read a book or relax. So I couldn't do a retreat in my house, but maybe that's a possibility for you. And we'll, we can talk about that too. But number one, we need rest. Number two, we need reflection. At the very end of Psalm 139, which some of you might know, it's the one that talks about how we were knit together in our mother's womb and we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Actually, at the beginning and the end, the psalmist talks about being known by God. The very beginning actually says, you have searched me, Lord, and you know me. And then it goes on. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You're familiar with my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. You hem me in behind and before me, and you lay your hand upon me. Uh, And it goes on from there. I actually wrote a song based on this psalm. It's called You Know Me. I will link it in the show notes. But at the very end, so after saying, God, you have searched me, you do know me, the psalmist then invites God to continue to do those things. Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. We need that reflection. And I'm going to talk about what each one of these looked like for me in a second. But I just want to say the third one. We need community. So I went to a retreat that was not a silent retreat. I'm doing that later. So we were all ministers, like I said, and I got to have some great and challenging conversations with people. And I, I'll, I'll go into the, what the retreat was like for me part now, starting with the community. I really needed some of those conversations. I really needed some of those friendships to be strengthened. These are people that I would say some of whom are friends in friendships that are growing. And I don't get to see these people that often because I don't necessarily live near them. But when I do see them, like for instance, I went up to a woman on the first day and I said, how are you doing? And as ministers and missionaries and pastors, our tendency is to talk about how our work is going. And there's not, not, not necessarily anything wrong with that because that's often part of what God is doing in our lives and in our ministry. And then I said to her, how are you doing? And she's like, you mean personally? And I'm like, yeah, that's what I mean. And then the next day I went up to a guy that I know, you know, he's a youth pastor at a church and I tapped him on the shoulder, put my hand on his shoulder and I said, how are you doing? And he's like, Well, I'll actually answer that question because I know you're chill. That's what he (laughs) said. Young people today, though, I actually don't think he's that much younger than me. But first of all, that was a nice compliment because that meant he felt like he could talk to me. But I need those conversations. I speak very honestly. I've been in a funk lately. I don't know anything else to call it. Really feeling like... A little bit out of sorts. Yeah, it's it's. I don't have words for it. Maybe on the other side of it, I will be able to better express what I've been experiencing. But I knew I needed to... Well, I thought I was going to the retreat to just meet with God. I, I was sure God was going to tell me some big revelation or some big breakthrough. I don't, I don't know. I don't know if I was sure of that. But that's what I was expecting. And I will tell you that God did speak to me. You want to know how he spoke to me? Not through a big breakthrough, not through sobbing my eyes out at the altar. (laughs) I don't know. Maybe only us Pentecostals do that. But the first way that he spoke to me was through scriptures, both in my regular Bible reading that I did while I was there. And my journal has scriptures at the bottom. Sometimes I post them on my Instagram, which I will link. I will link my Instagram in the show notes. I'm not super consistent there, but whatever. I post enough that if you're on Instagram, might as well follow me. But I have a journal that my family got me for my birthday, and it has scriptures on it. And I'm not even joking. Like, let's see. One, 
two. In fact, that search me, O God, and know my heart scripture was one of them. One, two, three, four, five. Five in a row were like key scriptures in my life. And then today, as we wrapped up and I was taking notes on today's session, it was another favorite scripture of mine. I will not forget you. See, I have engraved you on the palms of my hands. That's from Isaiah 49. I'm sure I've told you about that before. So God did speak to me. He spoke to me through my Bible reading and through the scriptures in my journal. I mean, after a while, I was literally, literally laughing out loud at the fact that every scripture on the, bo on the bottom in a row was speaking right to me. He spoke to me through a friend I had dinner with, and that includes even like talk of nutrition and health because that has been a struggle for me lately. He spoke to me through a couple of people who prayed for me. I did go up to someone and ask for prayer, but also two people came to pray for me during the worship service. And then a woman I had breakfast with that I'd never met before followed me out as I was leaving. I had to go get something from my car. And she was like, God is compelling me to pray for you. And she prayed a really powerful prayer. And then when I got home, one of my, my friends had sent me a message on a messaging app. I just wasn't looking at messaging apps while I was gone. That really spoke to me too. I need to write it in my journal. I actually wrote it down on some random envelope over here. And then I was talking to a friend and she was sharing like where she and her family are at spiritually based on some changes they've experienced. And what she said reminded me of a Sarah Groves song called Open My Hands. And I will post it in the link, at the link in the show notes. And so it may not have been like a download from God like I get sometimes because part of my funk is the fact that I haven't really been hearing from God, which is something that generally comes naturally to me. <laughs> and maybe I take it for granted because of that. But God did speak. So in my retreat, I made space and time to rest, to reflect, and to build community. And I will say, even this morning, I was I got up early because I don't sleep well on these things. But I got up early and I was like, you know, I could go see the sunrise at the beach, which I tried to do yesterday and failed. I could not find the beach or the sun because it was so foggy out. I did find the why. <laughs> the gym because the gym at the hotel didn't open till 7 30 so I went to the Y and I was there before 6 a.m but uh it was very foggy and like threatening to rain this morning and I thought I'm gonna go all the way to the beach because the hotel was not by the beach and I'm not gonna see the sun there's not gonna be any pretty colors it's not gonna be some big moment so I skipped the beach and I sat in red for like almost an hour and a half, probably, because I made myself stay in bed till six this morning, <laughs> but breakfast wasn't until eight. So besides taking a shower and making a pot of coffee, which I had already set up the night before, I just sat and read and I prayed and I did my 10 minutes of quiet twice. <laughs> I caught up on my devotional and it was awesome. And yes, I came home a little bit tired because I do not sleep well in these things. And there was a lot to do when I got home but it's important. And so I just want to close with, you might not be able to go away for two days because of money or work or your kids or whatever it is. I always encourage people to ask themselves, what can I do? What can I do? Can I take a little hike into the woods and sit on a rock for a couple hours with my journal can I go into a study room at my church or even my library has little study rooms for a couple of hours while my kids are at school or while I get a friend to watch them and just sit and reflect? Some of you may read the Bible regularly or have a regular quiet time. Some of you may not, but I'm not talking about five minutes, 10, 15 minutes in the morning. I'm talking about a little chunk of time. And one of the reasons I recommend going away if you can is because then you can rest. Uh, Ruth Haley Barton, who's written a bunch of books, and some of which I've reviewed on Instagram, including this one I have right here, which I'm going to use on my silent retreat, 
talks about how when she goes on retreat, one of the first things she has to do is take a nap because she's usually so tired. And I actually did. I think I took two naps that first day. One before I even left my house, I was so tired. So, but what can you do? Not what can't you do. Don't list all the obstacles to me. What can you do? Because you can make something happen. Something that was said at the retreat was that if you tell someone or something, meaning like a project or whatever, I don't have time for you, you don't, if you don't have time, it's because of your priorities and how your priorities are lined up. Now, obviously I'm not saying toss aside the kids and all your responsibilities, but <laughs> that to me said, yeah, sometimes I need to reassess my priorities. So anyway, why retreat? Well, I hope you are at least going to think about this and pray about this. Speaking of prayer, let's do this. Lord, thank you for a wonderful retreat. And yes, I'm a little tired, but I also was excited, am excited about how you met me. It wasn't how I was hoping you would meet me, but you met me exactly how I needed you to meet me. Sometimes I have expectations. I, I have desires about how I want things to go, but you know exactly what I need. And so, Lord, I thank you and I pray for my Coffee with Brenna friends that they too would find time, make space, and adjust their priorities to make time to rest, reflect, and connect, and that you would bless that time. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, my Coffee with Brenna friends. Love comments. Love to hear from you. Tell me about your retreat experiences. Seriously. And until next time, thanks for joining me for Coffee with Brenna.